Hi, my name's Tony Preston, and in this short video, we're going to run through some of the basic functionality of Agilent's N9340B handheld spectrum analyzer. If you want to learn more about the N9340B, make sure you get a copy of the complete user training and application tutorial DVD, which you can obtain free of charge from Agilent Technologies. Just go to the URL shown at the bottom of the screen. It runs for about an hour and provides far more detailed training on a whole range of practical topics, such as making interference measurements, measuring the modulation characteristics of carriers, sweeping antennas, and diplexes. And if you've not done so already, you might want to download the PDF of the Agilent N9340B demonstration guide so that you can follow along during the course of this presentation. Let's start with a quick overview of the instrument's front panel. Here, below the display, is the instrument's power button. Just press that to toggle the instrument on and off. And to the right of that are a range of function buttons. Here you can set things like the frequency range, the frequency span, the amplitude range and reference level and attenuation, the resolution bandwidth and sweep time of the instrument. You can turn on additional traces. You can make sophisticated measurements by pressing the mesh key, such as occupy bandwidth. You can press the mode button in order to access different modes of the instrument and the sys button for changing settings such as the date and time or seeing which options are installed in the instrument. There are the usual three methods for data entry, either using the numeric keypad, the up down arrow keys or by turning the knob. You can press the marker button to turn on a marker and access various marker functions and of course we've got the soft keys the meaning of which changes depending on which of the function keys I've pressed. And probably the most useful button on the entire instrument is the green preset button. Pressing this resets the instrument and puts it back to its factory default state. It's highly recommended that you always press that green button before starting a new measurement to make sure that any strange settings that a previous user may have set up within the instrument have been cleared. On top here, you can see there's a built-in loudspeaker for listening to demodulated audio. And below that is a light sensor. The N9340B has an incredibly bright daylight viewable display that if using indoors or in dark conditions could actually be too bright. So with the automatic light sensor activated, the instrument will automatically adjust the screen brightness depending on ambient light conditions. If I press the Sys button, you can see here there's a button called Brightness. If I press that, you can see it's set to Manual and Level of 5. I can turn the knob and make the screen brighter or dimmer. If I press the button again, it changes the brightness setting to Auto. Now the light sensor is active and the screen brightness will be automatically adjusted depending on the ambient lighting conditions. I'll set that back to Manual for now. There's another useful function if you're working at night or in a dark communications room. The key backlight button, if I press that, I can turn the brightness of the key backlights on. So I press brightness and let's set it to high. Now if we dim the studio lights, you can see that all of the buttons are now backlit and easily viewable in dark conditions. Before we start making any measurements, let's see how we can save and recall measurement setups and results. Everyone these days needs to keep a record of their measurement results for documenting in a report or emailing to a client. The N9340B makes this especially easy as you can store trace data, screen captures, limit masks, spectrum masks and even instrument setups to either the internal memory or directly to a USB memory stick. Saving the entire instrument setup is incredibly useful as it means you can share the same setup between multiple instruments ensuring that every measurement is made the same way every time regardless of the operator. Here I've set up the instrument to monitor the output from a mobile phone base station. So let's save the setup into the N9340B's internal memory so we can quickly recall it in the future. And if you're following along in the demonstration guide, then turn to section two, and we're going to follow the instructions at the bottom of the page there. So let's call up the file save menu by pressing the sys button. And then we're going to select the internal memory. So I'm going to press file, and then file setup. 
and the save path is currently set to local, which is what I want. But if I wanted to store to the USB memory stick, I could change that to USB. But we'll leave that as local for now. Then we're going to select the file type. So we press File Setup, and the kind of file we want to save here is an instrument state, so that I can recall it later if I wish to. So I'll press the State button. Then we can enter a file name using the numeric keypad. So I'll call this 1, 2, 3. And then I'll press Save, and that state has now been saved into the internal memory. And you can see that here, the file name is 123, it's a state file, and it was saved uh, on the 1st of October 2010. Now let's do exactly the same thing again, but this time save the instrument setup to the USB memory stick. So I'll press File Setup, and change the save path to USB. I can now give it a new file name, I'll call it 456, and I'll press Save. Now the reason you can't see that file saved on this display here is because the path for the display is still set to local. So let's view the USB stick. And here you can see on the USB stick, it says the path is USB, and we have a file called 456. It's a state saved again on the 1st of October 2010. Now let's say we've gone out on site and we want to recall that setup. Let me first of all preset the instrument to put it back to its factory default state. Then what I'll do is I'll press the Sys button and then File. And if I change the view to the USB memory stick, you can see here our file, our setup saved as 456. If I now press Load Now, you can see immediately the whole instrument has been reconfigured to exactly the same setup that I had for the previous measurement of this base station. Let's start by making some simple measurements of a 100 MHz RF carrier, which is being generated by one of these fantastic new MXG signal generators from Agilent Technologies. I've set the signal generator frequency to 100 MHz, the output level to minus 10 dBm, and turned the RF on, and let's connect the signal to the N9340B analyzer. So I'll disconnect the antenna, and let's connect the signal to the analyzer. And I'm going to press the green preset button. And following the instructions in the demonstration guide, it says press frequency 100 megahertz. There's the signal. It then says press span 10 megahertz. That's to zoom in on it. And now we can press the amplitude button and rotate the knob to bring the signal to the top of the screen. Fantastic. So there's the 100 megahertz signal. Now if I want to measure that, I can always press the marker button and we can see there that the marker is indeed at 100 megahertz and the level being measured is minus 10.8 dBm. Now if you turn to section 6 of the demonstration guide, you'll see one of the most fundamental applications of a spectrum analyzer searching for and measuring low-level signals. Examples might include looking for weak 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi signals out in the field, or searching for interfering signals, surveillance applications, or, as in this demonstration, we're going to be looking for the third harmonic of a transmitter. A spectrum analyzer sensitivity, its ability to measure very small signals, is a key specification of any spectrum analyzer. With the optional preamplifier that's built into the N9340B, you can measure signals as low as minus 144 dBm, provided you know how to set it up properly. So with the 100 MHz signal from the signal generator still connected to the analyzer, let's press the preset button, and then we press frequency 300 MHz, and a span of 150 kHz. And you can't see this third harmonic signal on the screen, so let's take a few steps to improve the sensitivity of this measurement. Firstly, I'm going to press the amplitude button and adjust the reference level to bring the trace further up onto the screen. And we can just about see a glimmer of a third harmonic signal in the middle of the screen there. Now, let's reduce the resolution bandwidth 
that will have the effect of reducing the noise floor. If you don't understand why that's the case, take a look at application note 150, uh, which you can download from Agilent's website. And that explains all about resolution bandwidth and Boltzmann's law. So anyway, I've pressed system bandwidth button and I'm going to reduce the resolution bandwidth down to 100 hertz. And you'll see now the noise floor immediately drops and we can see the signal, the third harmonic signal from the signal generator much more clearly on the display. Now there's one more thing we can do to improve the sensitivity still further and that's to remove all the attenuation in the input signal path. So I'll press the amplitude button, press the attenuation button and enter 0 dB. And as you can see, that's given us roughly another 10 dB of sensitivity on the noise floor. And we can clearly see now the third harmonic signal from the signal generator. And if you want to measure the level of that, let's just press the marker button and we can read it off here, minus 81 dBm. With the RF spectrum becoming ever more crowded, the ability to see transmitters turning on and off over time is a very useful function, both for interference analysis at base stations and for surveillance by the military and security forces. Turn to section 8 in the demo guide and you'll see how we can use the spectrogram capability of the N9340B to identify and measure signals across a wide spectrum over a period of time. Now to demonstrate the spectrogram feature effectively, the frequency range that you select is going to depend very much on where you are located in the world. But for this application here, I'm going to look in the 400 megahertz band. So I'll press the instrument preset button, and then I'm going to set the frequency to 425 megahertz, and I'm going to set a span of 50 megahertz. Now to improve the sensitivity, I'm going to We'll change the reference level to minus 75 dBm. I'm going to turn the preamplifier on. And I'm going to change the scale per division to 5 dB per division. And you can now see a range of signals on the screen and a couple of intermittent ones. Now to turn on spectrogram, we just press the measure button and then press spectrogram. And what's happening now is that we still have the frequency spectrum on the x-axis of the display with a center frequency of 425 megahertz and a span of 50 megahertz but on the y-axis instead of showing amplitude we now have time. Amplitude is in fact displayed by the color of the trace so green is a weak signal and red is a strong signal. You can see already that we have a number of continuous transmitters shown on the display and these red dashed lines show transmitters that are turning on and off. Now I can change the update interval for the spectrogram measurement by pressing the update interval button. Now let's say I only want to capture a trace every 10 seconds. I can type in 10 seconds and now each new sweep will be performed after a 10 second delay and added to the collection of traces that make up the spectrogram. Let me set the update interval back to off so the trace will now update as fast as it can. Now a useful feature again on the spectrogram measurement if we want to know at what frequency these signals are I can turn on a marker. In fact there are two markers we can turn on. I'll turn on marker 1 and I'll turn on marker 2 and if I press the frequency button here and turn the knob you can see the two markers here, shown as black and white crosses, will move across the display. So I'm adjusting marker 2, which is the white cross there, and that's showing me that that signal is at 411.195652 MHz. You can also see the values of frequency for both markers, marker 1 and marker 2, and their amplitude levels at the top of the display. What's even more useful though is at the bottom of the display here it shows the time values of the two markers. So if I press the time button and adjust that you can see that the white marker is now showing me the amplitude values at a previous time during the recording of the spectrogram traces. Now if I want to save one of those specific spectrogram traces I can set the display mode to trace 
This shows me one of those historical traces that is being used to create that spectrogram diagram. And we can now save that trace into the internal memory or onto the USB memory stick. In the previous sections, we've been making measurements of RF signals. In other words, the output from transmitters. There's another really important use for handheld spectrum analyzers when out in the field, and that's the ability to measure RF devices, such as filters, diplexers, cables, and antennas. Because these devices don't generate a signal themselves, we need to connect a test signal to the input of the device and use the analyzer to measure what effect the device has on that signal. The tracking generator option in the N9340B does exactly this. We connect the tracking generator output to the 